musicians and the authors connected with this program, we beg your indulgence for the next 30 minutes, more or less, and ask you to appraise a new radio presentation designed especially for leisurely listening. My name is Larry Keating, and the delightful music enhancing this announcement is being provided by Albert Sack and his orchestra. Soon you'll be introduced to some of your favorite personalities who are gathered at the entirely mythical Gentleman's Club. In the order of their appearance, you'll meet the irrepressible Frank Morgan, the affable and gifted Ralph Bellamy, and the impeccable and witty Reginald Gardner. Later, you'll witness the bringing to life of that gem of all comic strip characters, Barnaby. Mr. Crockett Johnson, who created Barnaby pictured the child as a little boy, and still does for that matter. However, using Peter Pan, which was portrayed by the eminent Maud Adams as a precedent, we prevailed upon Mr. Johnson to let us use a little girl in the title role. So Barnaby will be played by tiny Norma Nilsson. Now, it's my extreme pleasure to present the beautiful South American singing star of Paramount Pictures, Miss Olga San Juan. Good, 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 but you, that you... Fine, 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 but you, that you. Nice, 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 but you, that you. Good, 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 but you, that you. Your tasty lips are sweeter than a lollipop. But every time I kiss you, how I, how I hate to stop. I wreck my brain to find the proper adjective. A sentimental compliment to give you. Good, 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 but you, that you. Fine, 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 but you, that you. Nice, 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 but you, that you. Good, 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 that you, that you. I never went to Eton University. Therefore, I have a limited vocabulary. And so I use the language that I have on hand while making love to you on your veranda. See, 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 baby, that's you, that's you. No, 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 that's you, that's you. Yeah. Use the language that I have on hand for making love to you on your veranda. Good, good, good. Fine, fine, fine. But you, that's you. Good, good, good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Fine, fine, fine. Yum, yum, yum. Good, good, good. But you, that's you. May I check your hat, sir? Oh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, all the members. Uh, and all day I've looked forward to meeting the most handsome one. Oh, you yeah. have? Oh, yes. <laughs> what time does Mr. Gardner usually come in? Oh, uh, <laughs> Gardner, well, just take care of that hat. It's a new one. <clears throat> well, good evening, Mr. Morgan. You're right on the top of day as usual. Well, good evening, David. I see they haven't replaced you with a woman yet. No, sir. Shall I get you a table in the dining room, sir? Well, a little later, David. I'll have a bourbon in the library first. Before dinner. Better make it two. I never eat on an empty stomach. <laughs> any, uh, any phone calls, David? Yes, sir. There were five calls. Five, huh? Two young ladies and three gentlemen. Fine. Let me have their numbers. Here they are, sir. <laughs> Both of them. I... <laughs> Thank you. Now hurry with my aperitif, David, and be sure Carl gets the proper proportions the way I like them. Well, he'll get the right amount of bourbon, sir, but he may be a little off on the water. I can't stand the stuff straight. Better have him just serve it in a damp glass. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, hello, Frank. Well, good evening, Ralph. I'm surprised to see you in here at all. I didn't think you'd get past the cloakroom today. Cloakroom? Yes. Don't tell me you didn't notice our new little hat check girl. Oh, her! <laughs> I... Didn't give that girl a second thought. What? I was too busy with the first one. <laughs> Cute, isn't she? 
You know, Frank, the presence of a woman in the gentleman's club has created quite a furor among the more sedate members. Well, what's wrong with having a woman in the gentleman's room? A uh, cop. <laughs> is furious. Says if he's re-elected president, the girl will have to go. Well, that's the trouble with his mausoleum. It's time they chose a younger man to run things. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Oh, hello, Gardner. Ralph, I think I'd make an excellent president. My vision is clear, my mind is keen, and my hand is steady. How are your legs? Hollow. Hello. <laughs> the more I think of it, Bellamy, the more I'm convinced I'd make a wonderful president. Uh, we don't have a president in England. Uh, King, you know. Mm. But, Frank, you've got to be elected first. The yes. king is born to it. Well, I'll put my name up immediately. He lives all his life in pomp and circumstance. <clears throat> and you think you'll pull many circumstances? Well, at least a few pomps out there. What are we talking about? <laughs> king? No, we weren't. We were discussing presidents. Frank, you haven't got a chance against Hudson. Oh, no fiddle-faddle. Hudson has been club president for 14 years. Besides, he's held some pretty important political jobs on the outside. Well, I'm not exactly an abecedarian myself. The climax of my political career, I was known as Honest Frank Morgan, friend of the working girl. Friend of the working girl. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got a little too friendly with one of them and was run out of town. I see. And so you retired to Pasadena and opened a stud farm for guppies. <laughs> Not at all. I bounded back into politics like a rubber ball. I was sought after by both the Democrats and the Republicans. In England, they're known as conservatives. How interesting. Three years later, I... My second cousin was a conservative. Yeah. Yes, he stood for swimming bath instructor in the by-elections at Chatham. Lovely town, Chatham. Famous for its pugly woogle. Woogly woogle. Yes. Yeah, a sort of toffee. It tastes mm. like a mixture of sheep dip and cracker dust. <laughs> the, um, the street urchins stand about munching them like so many little gnomes. Well, that's fine. Well, I'm... It I'm, produces I'm, I'm, the I'm, most singular noise. The peppermint ones sound like this. And the chutney ones sound more like this. Mouth-watering, isn't it? When 10 or 12 of the little beggars get together, it sounds like a Hotchkiss reciprocating force pump draining a peat bog in Clonakilty. <laughs> well, never mind that. What happened to your cousin? I really can't say. Well, on election night, he won a barrel of beer and slipped through the bunghole, and we haven't heard from him since. <laughs> Gardner, when I look at you, I realize the value of a black ball. <laughs> On the contrary, Frank, I think you can learn a great deal from Reggie's cousin. Don't be childish. I've fallen through more bungholes than no, any man. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, politics. Ralph, in 1936, I achieved my greatest political recognition as ambassador plenipotentiary to the court of St. James. No doubt uh, Reggie will remember. Let me see, 1936? Yes. Uh, what year did that fall on? Don't quibble, Reggie. Let's assume 1936 fell on 1936. Go ahead, Frank. Thank you. I had no sooner arrived in England than the State Department recalled me for violation of diplomatic protocol. What did you do? Well, there was some fuss about the way I entered the court. It seems I had the only attaché case that ever leaked on the royal carpet. <laughs> Frank. You had a bottle in your attaché case? Well, it wasn't a cock a spaniel. <laughs> On my return to Washington, I immediately went to the State Department to explain my conduct. I had a conference with Under Secretary of State Wells. Was he sympathetic? Yeah, after a fashion. When he heard my story, he told me to go to Hull. <laughs> What he said. <laughs> and, uh, and so ends the incident of the leaky briefcase. Not by a long shot. A few well-chosen words, and I had the secretary eating out of my hand. In a trice, I received one of the most coveted assignments in diplomatic circles. Suffice it to say that it was known as the tinderbox of Europe. I have it. What? 
1936 did fall on 1936. <laughs> I was instructed to negotiate with the power behind the throne, the beautiful and glamorous Princess June of the House of Murphy. I'll admit I was greatly impressed. After all, I was but a typical clean-cut American boy from New Rochelle. Uh, I can well imagine. Suddenly, as I was reclining in the vicinity of the punch bowl, there was a fanfare of trumpets, and down the great staircase came the beautiful Princess of June. She was in the full bloom of queenly womanhood, a striking figure in a form-fitting gown of white satin and ermine. She reminded me of nothing so much as a beautiful song. The Princess Waltz? No, June is busting out all over. <laughs> as I looked over the palatial palace grounds, I was impressed by the beauty of the scene. Needless to say, it was nothing like New Rochelle. Oh, I don't suppose so. The princess stood there close to me with the Baltic moon framing her fragile beauty. Ah, yes, it was nothing like New Rochelle. Go on, Frank. As the scent of her intoxicating perfume engulfed me, she was suddenly in my arms. I kissed her. Yes. And from then on, it was just like New Rochelle. A musical diversion by Albert Sack and his orchestra. With August San Juan, we present Jose and Nestor, the Brazilian sensations from Walt Disney's The Three Caballeros in Tico Tico. Acaba comendo o cuba inteiro 
Si eres el chico de la décima de mi copa, te estás protegiendo por ese pinicar. Hoy yo pistudo para ver si conocía, o te apiste para ver si la comía, o te un gato en los fotos, esa papa se la saca de copa que ya fue alimento de alma. The Adventures of Barnaby and the Child's Fairy Godfather, Mr. O'Malley, the Lilliputian gentleman with pink wings and ever-present cigar, are followed avidly each day by millions of delighted newspaper readers. Since no adult has ever actually seen O'Malley, Barnaby's bewildered parents are inclined to believe their otherwise normal child is subject to hallucinations, or at least given to fantasy-making. But Mr. O'Malley does exist, as you shall soon see and hear for yourselves. At this very moment, Barnaby sits in the carpeted foyer of the exclusive gentleman's club, waiting for Pop, played by Ralph Bellamy. Well, Barnaby, you've been waiting here almost half an hour now. I guess your father's talking some pretty big business inside. Oh, I don't mind waiting, but I wish you had some more interesting magazines. What are you reading there? The Wall Street Journal. <laughs> but I don't understand it very well. Well, between you and me, Barnaby, most of the gentlemen here don't understand it neither. Oh, but Mr. O'Malley understands it. Mr. O'Who? Mr. O'Malley. He's a member here. I've been here 12 years, and I ain't never heard of any Mr. O'Malley. Oh, I'm sure he belongs to the club. He told me so himself. Oh, David. Yes, Mr. Reggie? Uh, would you ask at the desk and see... Oh, hello. Who's the infant? This is Barnaby Baxter, sir. Asking for Mr. O'Malley. Now, I don't recall any member by that name. I'm afraid I don't either. What does he look like, little boy? Well, he's not very tall. He smokes a cigar and has a turned-up nose, and I'm not a little boy. I'm a little girl. <laughs> I, I thought Barnaby was a boy. Well, Crockett Johnson, who created the character, gave me permission to be a little girl. <laughs> and I'll thank you, Mr. Gardner, to keep sex out of this. <laughs> Well, uh, about this Mr. O'Malley, does he have any distinguishing characteristics? No, but he does wear a green overcoat and, and a pair of pink wings. Well, I'm afraid I don't know him, miss. Uh, none of our members wears a green overcoat. Excuse me, miss, but did you say pink wings? That's right. You know, come to think of it, Mr. Reggie, that's why Herbert left. Oh, did he have pink wings, too? <laughs> no, sir. Herbert was a cloakroom boy. Last week, after the big banquet, left over in the cloakroom was three umbrellas, a gray fedora, and a pair of pink wings. I suppose it uh, gave him a bit of a start. Yes, sir. <laughs> he figured if the angels was pressing him that close, he better take himself home and lay it out. <laughs> oh, I'm sure those wings were Mr. O'Malley's. Uh, little girl, I hate to disillusion you, but are you positive that this O'Malley person isn't just uh, a hallucination? No, he's my fairy godfather. Fairy godfather? Uh-oh. Herbert, move over. <laughs> oh, you're just like my parents. They don't believe in Mr. O'Malley either. There you are, Barnaby. I'm all finished with my business. We'd better be getting home now. But, Pop, can I stay and see Mr. O'Malley? Uh, uh, not tonight. Well, don't tell me you've heard of this O'Malley, too. Oh, I hear about him all the time, Reggie. He carries a cigar, a wand, and he has a friend named Gus the Ghost. Well, see you tomorrow, Gardner. Come on, Barnaby. What did you buy in the hardware store, Pop? Seeds, Barnaby. I thought it'd be nice if you planted a victory garden out here in the backyard. That's fine. I'll get Mr. O'Malley to help me. Barnaby, the whole point of this victory garden is to get your mind off, O'Malley. You start planting these beans, and I'll go in and put on my old clothes. All right, Pop. Oh, gosh. Mr. O'Malley won't like us doing the hardest part without him. 
I guess I'll start digging over here. Uh, hello, Barnaby. Mr. O'Malley. Yes. I looked for you at the gentleman's club, but they said you weren't there. Yes, well, I went in the back way. Uh, <laughs> Gus, the ghost, and I were inspecting the premises. He's considering haunting it, you know. Seems he's a little disgusted with his present position. Isn't he happy in the old Jackson place? No, he has trouble getting laundry service out there. <laughs> the only ones that will go out that far is the dainty Didy Laundry Company. <laughs> Gus says no self-respecting ghost would be caught dead in those things. Mr. O'Malley, yes. would you help me with my victory garden? Poor Gus. He always had some problem or other. A few years back, he had a good steady job lined up as Phantom of the Opera. But he couldn't clear it with Petrillo. <laughs> Barnaby, uh, what are you planting there? Beans. Beans? Kushla McCree. How unimaginative. In a book, a beanstalk got so big, a boy named Jack climbed up it, and, and he met a giant, and he got a bag of gold. <laughs> Likely story. What you ought to plant is Cypripedia rarus. What's that? Orchids, of course. Everyone knows that. I never heard of anyone climbing an orchid. <laughs> well, you don't climb them, Barnaby. You wear them. You mean they have sleeves? No. <laughs> Women put them on to make themselves more attractive. It's called a corsage. Oh, yes. Mother has an awful time with hers. <laughs> Yes, well, that's another thing entirely. Well, now that we've decided on orchids, I'll go and get the seeds. But Mr. O'Malley... Oh, my. He's gone. Well, Barnaby, do we have our little beans all safely tucked away in their earthy beds? Hmm? No, Pop. I'm not planting beans. We're going to raid Cypripedia Rarus. What's that? Orchids, of course. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Barnaby, you can't grow orchids in your backyard. Well, Mr. O'Malley, my fairy godfather. Oh, oh that... I might have known he was behind this. Whose advice are you going to follow, mine or that fanciful character you dream about? All right, Pop. I'll plant beans. Good. If you run into any trouble, I'll be in the house reading a book on child psychology. I'll be all right. <laughs> Bad news, Barnaby. Not a single orchid seed to be had at the hardware store. Such a big demand for them, I suppose. Well, it really doesn't matter, Mr. O'Malley, because I've decided to plant beans after all. Beans? Barnaby, whose advice are you going to follow in this matter? But gosh, Mr. O'Malley... Very well, Barnaby. We'll plant beans. Mr. O'Malley, yeah? these bean seeds look just like all other seeds. Well, of course. Well... Before it starts to grow, mm -hmm. how does it know to grow up to be a bean? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> now, if you'll just dig over there, I think I'll... Wouldn't a find... bean feel awfully disappointed if, if it grew up to be an asparagus? <laughs> but that couldn't happen, Barnaby. You didn't grow up to be a horse because your mother and father weren't horses. I'm glad. <laughs> I wouldn't like to pull a milk wagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same way with a bean. It's mother and father were beans. Little beans are just like you are, only they live under the ground where it's dark. If there's no light, how do they study their homework? No, they don't. But it's so dark down there, the teachers don't know the difference. <laughs> Mr. O'Malley? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's fine. You can put the seeds in now. <laughs> that's right. Face them well. Now, pat the earth down over them. There. Now, what do we do next? Nothing. All we have to do is stand around and watch them grow. It's funny. There's nothing coming up yet. <clears throat> <laughs> they probably need water. I think I'll go get the sprinkling can. Well, there's no need for that, Barnaby. If you really want water, I'd be only too happy to prod the elements a bit with my magic wand. Gosh, Mr. O'Malley, can you make it rain just by waving your cigar? Uh, certainly. Make it rain, Mr. O'Malley. Yes, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, the last time I performed such a feat 
I got rather a nasty letter from the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Make it rain, Mr. O'Malley, please. Well? Bean will go into a big beanstalk, and I can climb up and, and see the giant. Giant? Well, if it's a giant you want to see, there's no use making it rain at all. I happen to be acquainted with a well-established practicing giant myself. Ran into him in the woods only yesterday. That's wonderful. When can I see him? Well, I'll be happy to give you a formal introduction right now. Let's hurry before it gets dark. We'll, uh, we'll just keep walking, Barnaby. We'll run into the giant along here somewhere. Oh, I'm scared, Mr. O'Malley. Oh, no. I'll bet he's big and ferocious and, and carries a huge club. Shh, quiet. I think I heard something move. It's the giant. He's coming out of the bushes. Hello. <laughs> Atlas Barnaby. Barnaby, meet Atlas. How do you do? Fee, fi, fo, fum. You're awfully small for a giant. You must be the new dehydrated model. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be too critical of Atlas Barnaby. He's a mental giant. That's a funny-looking club he's carrying. That's not a club. That's a slide rule. No matter what you want to know, it'll give you the correct answer. Mr. Atlas, can you make it rain with your sliding ruler? Of course not. No one can make it rain. Mr. O'Malley can, just by waving his cigar. O'Malley, what have you been telling this child? You know it's impossible to make it rain. It's not impossible. I can prove it's impossible. I... Give me a minute with my slide rule, and I'll prove he can't make it rain. If I were to wave my magic wand like this... You'll see. O'Malley, you'll be clouding the problem with mysticism. Now, I'll figure it out in a jiffy. C squared over phi equals C phi thumb. Carry the fold, dangle the thumb, <laughs> add two Cs, three times phi. Mr. O'Malley! What? It's raining! Well, of course, it was no trouble at all for a man of my ingenuity. X, uh, X pi squared over coefficient of six million plus the dew point. It, I could easily prove you can't make it rain if my slide rule wasn't getting all wet. <laughs> so much for your theories, Atlas. Come along, Barnaby. Gee, Mr. O'Malley, it was wonderful the way you made it rain with your magic wand. <laughs> now that we're alone, confidentially, Barnaby, I didn't use the magic wand. <laughs> you didn't? No. Then how did you make it rain? By the simple process of deductive reasoning. What does that mean? Well, today, for the first time this month, I left my umbrella at home and forgot to wear my rubbers. It all adds up to just one thing. What's that, Mr. O'Malley? Rain, Barnaby, rain! Cush the McCree! <laughs> Listen to Frank Morgan, Reginald Gardner, Ralph Bellamy, August San Juan, the Brazilian jive expert Jose Oliveira and Nestor Amaral, the Gentleman's Club bar steward James Vasquez, the metal giant Arthur Q. Bryan, and tiny Norman Nilsson as Barnaby. This program is a Phil Rapp presentation written by Joseph Connolly and Robert Mosher and directed by Mr. Rapp. <laughs>